Hi guys, my name's Mark and today we're going to be making the accessories for the homemade table saw. If you haven't seen parts 1, 2 and 3 of the build, they'll be clickable in this video. Alright guys, we're going to get started with the shelf that sits underneath the table saw. I was going to build a cabinet for this, but I decided not to. I'll explain that a little bit further in the video. I was going to install a really nice on-off switch with emergency stop, but at around $150 locally, it was a little bit out of my budget, so I decided to just go for a simple four-switch power board with on-off. I don't have any experience wiring, so I really didn't want to cut up the cable for the circular saw. noticed in part 3 of my build video, I offset the tape measure 2cm from the blade. This is so I can make a pointer for the fence. This is, I think, 1mm aluminium. I prefer not to show my mistakes on camera just because it's quite embarrassing, but for anyone out there trying to bend aluminium until it breaks, just cut it up with a hacksaw. It's a lot easier. Then all I had to do was give it a quick shape until it fit around the fence nicely. I don't normally work with metals, so for me, I thought I could just drill the holes by hand. Turns out I cut my finger pretty bad, so I moved it over to the drill press and used pliers to hold it. Then I could just file the holes out so I could adjust the pointer. And surprise, surprise, I'm using a Craig screw. Heading over to the miter slots for this table saw, I'm using Rockler T-Tracks that I bought off the website. After doing a quick search on all the popular table saw manufacturers, it turns out the T-Tracks are usually about 15 centimeters offset from the blade. I'm really digging this router a friend donated to me. It has a micro adjustment dial so you can get things cutting perfectly, which is really crucial with this build. I routed the slots in two to three passes and I did place a clamp on the end of the fence. There's a little bit of play on that side but it doesn't affect the cut when I'm using the table saw. Once both slots were routed, I could place the T-Tracks in the slots and mark where I have to cut. Something I didn't show in the video because the lighting is very poor underneath the bench is I just grabbed some scrap pieces of plywood and glued them along the table saw just so it has some extra thickness from where I routed the slots. Damn it. I'm always one screw short. One of the T-Track offcuts I placed on top of the fence so I can attach various jigs that I'll be making in the near future.
This piece of MDF I'm going to be using as a shelf. If you remember from the start of the video, I've already added the blocks. Half of this will be a shelf, the other half of this MDF will be for a sled. Then it was just a matter of putting a little bit of glue on, placing the shelf and using brad nails to secure it. So I'm going to show you why I'm not building a cabinet for this table saw. I only have this Kasha shop rack, which is really good for all my tools. It handles the dust really well. And my circular saw has this really nifty attachment to draw all the dust out. And it works really well. I reckon it co collects at least 85% at least of the dust through this thing. It works really, really well. So if I was to have a large dust collection system, it'd be a lot easier but because this is only a little shop vac I feel if I build a cabinet and I have a the hose connected directly to the cabinet it's not going to draw all the dust out when it's connected directly to the circular saw it does so that's why I'm only having it with a little shelf and at the end of the day it is a homemade table saw which I'm going to be using this for a long time but right now it suits my needs perfectly the only thing I wish I could do is have a dado stack and the completed table saw looks something like this. Bosch make a riving knife specifically for this circular saw, so I've just ordered one of those online. But for the most part, it's done. I have my dust collection on one switch, the circular saw on the other switch, and I'm really happy with the results. Thanks for watching guys, again with the riving knife, which was probably my biggest concern, I decided to buy one online simply because I couldn't make one that I felt was safe enough. But um, a big thank you to everyone that subscribed. My channel blew up from a few hundred to over 3,000. We're almost to 3,500 now in a couple of months. So really big thank you to, to you guys. All the positive feedback as well really motivates me to keep making videos. So thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.